how to test drive a simple CRUD API built with .NET. Is it even worth it to do it? We know that CRUD APIs don't have much to be tested there, so why even care about applying test-driven development? Is it even a good idea? I have spent countless hours trying to find a good answer for that. So in this video, I will share with you my simple and pragmatic approach to use test-driven development while we build a CRUD API. And if you find this interesting and you want to go deeper into mastering test-driven development using C Sharp, I have a new course at Thome Train, and this is the most extensive and practical TDD course that you'll find out there as a C-Sharp developer. And let me tell you a secret. If you are one of the first 200, you can use the code GTDD and you will get 20% discount. You can find the link to the course in the description. So let's get back into our CRUD API. I want to build a robust CRUD API for managing a product catalog. So you know that basic create, update, read and delete from a given storage, a given database, whatever. And every single time that you see me talking about testing, you will see me talking about testing behaviors instead of technical concerns. So the question is, in the CRUD API, do I have behaviors? So if we look into the definition on the dictionary for what it is a behavior, we can see that a behavior is the way that a person, an animal or other thing behaves in a particular situation or under particular conditions. So to the question, does this API has behaviors? The answer is yes. Getting information from a database is a behavior. Adding it to the database is a behavior. Validating the request data is a behavior. So the act of asking an API to do something will force the API to have a given behavior. If we do a create request, it knows that it needs to perform some things. If we provide the valid data, it knows that it needs to behave in a given way. All of that are behaviors. But how should we test drive this thing? Let's take a look. So typically when I start implementing my solution, I would start from the inside out. I will try to find if my domain is too complex and then I will first try to master the core of my application, implementing all the detailed behaviors at a low level, and only then I would move to the outside of my application. But since I'm looking at a CRUD API, I will do exactly the opposite. I will start by testing my API itself, and then I will try to notice if there's some particular behavior that needs to be tested in isolation. I should focus only on that. So let's start. And our first goal is to create a project for testing. What I will do, I will create a test folder and there I will add my test project. So I will name it product catalog API.tests. I'm using X unit and I will simply create the project. So I will start by implementing tests regarding the create handpoint. I will name it create specification. And let's start by something simple as if I send something in a post, I should receive an HTTP status code. Okay. Should return 200. Okay. When send product. So what do I know here? I know that I need my API right? And then I will need an HTTP client to start doing requests to that API. And after that, I only want to look into the status code. So the first thing, how do I use my API here? So what we'll be doing here is to use the web application factory. But to do that, I will first need to have my API project. So I will create a folder source and there I will add a new API using the simple template from ASP.NET. Now on my tests, I will use the web application factory to be able to start my API under tests and be able to run tests against it. So in your tests, let's go add a new class and then we will implement the web application factory. I still can't do it because I didn't install the required NuGet package. So let's just install the package and is this one, microsoft.aspnetcore.mvc.testing. So now I need to reference a type inside of my API so the web application factory knows the entry point of that API. And the way that I like to do it is with a simple interface that is an assembly marker. 
you don't need to add anything to that interface and now we just mention it. Now in our tests, what we can do is to define our API and that API factory will give you access to a create client method. So now we have an HTTP client to perform some requests against that API. Now that we have that, we can start daydreaming how does this thing will work. So we know from this test that we want to send the product and as a response, we want to look if we have the 200th OK. So let's start daydreaming the best format to interact with this API. Since we want to create data, let's start with the post method. So let's do the post async and let's give a path to the endpoint. So we'll do a post to the product and we want to send some data. So here I will step back for a while just to simplify my life. And instead of doing a post async, I will do a post as JSON async. And by doing that, I'm designing the contract of that API. I'm saying, okay, I have an endpoint product that will accept JSON as the content. And here I'm defining the payload. And let's say that a product has a name and a price. Now we want to assert the response of this post request. So what I will do is simply assign this to the response and await the request. So that implies that the method should be asynchronous as well. So in the end, we can do an assert.equal HTTP status code and the response status code. If we run our tests now, we can see that we are in a red state. And why? Because we are expecting an OK and we got a not found. And why do we have a not found? Because we don't even have that endpoint yet. So that is our first step. So we go into our API and we go to the hub.map post because here I'm using minimal APIs. You can do exactly the same using MVC as well, MVC controllers. And now I'll say products and that it should return an OK. So let's run the test once again. And now we are in a green stage. Perfect. So let's keep moving on. This means that our API is already handling this request. However, we are not doing anything with it. And the goal of the API is that we store the product somewhere. So let's bring another test. And in this one, let's say that we want to make sure that we add payload into the database. And let's say that this test is something like should add to storage when we receive a new product. So how can we test that? We will call the API and by the end we'll check into the database if the new product is there. And let's use Entity Framework to simplify our life here. And to use Entity Framework, we first need to configure our web application factory. So go into your web application factory, add the configure web host, and then we'll configure the test services. First thing, we need to have our DB context. So let's do that. We created our product catalog DB context. Simple thing. Now we need to have a product type. And as we said, a product will have a name and a price. Now we go back into our factory and then we will add our DB context. In that DB context, we'll use instead this use in memory database. So this means that for testing, we can use the in memory database while in production, we can use a different adapter to, for example, SQL. By doing so, we can bring a new method inside of our application factory. And there we can have that method to create a new product catalog. Once we have that, when we create our API factory, we can not only have access to the HTTP client, we can also create our product catalog. So if we grab the source code from the previous test and we paste it here, what we should expect is that by the end, after the post, after being sure that it has been executed with success, and now we can use the DB context to access the dot product dot first or default, for example, and check there's something. And with that, we can assign the result to a given variable and then simply check if it's not null, for example. Okay, the test is failing because I have a mistake on my factory. So let's quickly fix that. I need to send the options to the base class so we can throw this away, run our tests again. Now it's failing because the product has no primary key and that is true. So let's quickly fix that by going into our product 
and let's add an ID and a key attribute there. Let's run the test again and looks like we have our product as null. So now it's time to go back and implement our endpoint. Let's go back into our controller and let's keep it simple for now. Let's keep working here. And what do I know? I know that I will get a product. So I can simply go here and say, okay, I have a product. And what do I want to do with that product? Simple, I want to add it to the database. So I need to have here my DB context. So now I can go into DB context.products.have products and save changes. So we run our tests once again and now they succeed. So we are in a good state. And as you know from test driven development, first you want to have a red test, then move it to green then you refactor. So now it's the moment that we will look into this endpoint and see if we want to refactor something. For example, I could move out this thing from here. If I don't want to have my post endpoint here in program.cs, I can do that. I will not do it now. I will keep it for now. But looking into my tests, there are some things that I want to do. For example, I want to move this factory, for example, into the constructor. I can do that. So once I do that, my code is slightly simplified, but I think that even the DB context and the HTTP client can be defined there because they will be common across the multiple tests. For example, I would prevent from having this line here. So let's do the same. Okay, we improved our source code, but now let's give a step further. For example, I don't like this duplication here. So let me extract a variable and now I can keep moving on. As we have seen so far, we are using a dependency through entity framework that is a database. So by using this in-memory provider, I can keep my tests extremely fast and simplify my source code without a lot of concerns with abstractions over dependencies. And this way I have simple tests on top of an endpoint that is ensuring that that endpoint behaves as expected. And during this process, I might notice that I need some things that require more granular tests, and I may want to test them in a different way. For example, what if I want to validate my product? What if I want to make sure that the product price can't be zero or a negative number? On that case, we can do something as the following. So let's say that I have this test, should return 400 when the price is negative. We run our tests and that test will obviously fail. We don't have that validation in place. So I can go into my implementation and then I will check if the price is less than zero, let's return results.path request. So the test goes green. But what if these validations keep growing and this validation logic becomes quite complex? What you can do then is for example, extracting this validation code into a, into a different class. And then you can start unit testing that validation in isolation. Why? Because you don't want to have tests too complex in the frontier. And it's easier to test if you are focused on that validation piece. So you can mix and match these tests through the API with a few ones that are a bit more granular when you start seeing that there's a lot of logic involved. So it's not because it's a CRUD API that you don't have logic, but in a CRUD API, it might be useful to start from the outside in. And everything that I've showed you, you can now try to apply the same for the other endpoints. For example, to the get, update, delete, all the other CRUD endpoints, you can do exactly the same. And I will have that available for patrons. So as you can see, even in the CRUD API, without a lot of complexity, we can use test-driven development to have simple tests and also have an API that we trust. And then when things start to become complex, we can bring another type of tests to help us. So the conclusion is that we always have behaviors. Not only that, but by having simple and elegant tests, they work as documentation of what our API is doing. So we get it to a point where we have our simple endpoint. And the thing that might be missing here is how to make sure that this API will connect to the real database instead of that in memory, right? And for that, make sure that you watch this video right here, where I show you an insider trick for integration testing using Docker Compose.